Hi, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for Math in Context, Math for the Workplace. This is a Lynx sponsored webinar. Lynx is um, a, a wonderful resource for adult educators. It's lynx.ed.gov and we highly encourage that you go check that out. There's a number of free resources, including curriculum, um, videos, checklists, guides, uh, research, those kinds of things, in addition to a very active community, um, which you're going to hear a little bit more about in a second. So for today's activity, um, we have joining us a guest presenter and also the moderator of our math and numeracy community, Brooke, and she's going to say a little bit more about um, the community and the presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Brooke Istis, and I am the moderator for the Math and Numeracy Community of Practice. The Community of Practice has already posted a discussion for this continuing webinar. So um, if questions come to you after the webinar has taken place or if something doesn't get answered um, during the web webinar, we would like to ask you to please continue the conversation there so that way all your questions can get answered. Um, and I will post a link right now to where it is in the community of practice and then also at the end um, of the webinar as well, but it can be easily found by going into um, the math and numeracy community of practice. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our presenter. So Michael Matos is the Senior Director of Adult Education, Employment and Training Programs for Albany Park Community Center in Chicago. He manages the ABE, the ASE, the ESL, Employment and Training Programs. In addition, he is an Adult Education Standards Specialist in Mathematics. He presents at national, state, and regional conferences in topics related to adult literacy, math, technology, integration, standards, aligned instruction, and technology integration. So I'm going to turn it over to Michael. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending. Um, math in Context, uh, Math for the Workplace. So I would like to get started and uh, we'll have some questions along the way and hopefully uh, some comments coming from your direction. Um, so that's my mug there and uh, my welcome that uh, Brooke just went through. And I just wanted to go over the agenda. Uh, we're gonna be talking about math foundation skills and workplace examples, workplace math skills needed, math use at work and some surveys to do uh, with that, uh, math games and puzzles for skills practice, uh, some examples there, uh, some other varied math skills activities, examples, uh, some examples uh, that pertain to how much material uh, is needed for a, uh, a project and those types of activities. We'll also look at some uh, Bureau of Labor and Statistics um, and then using the XP Math uh, website, uh, looking at what math is needed by career. And then uh, to end it off with uh, some other resources uh, with websites. So um, looking at math foundation skills and workplace examples. So looking at this uh, very detailed chart here, um, we can look at some of the math foundation skills needed on the left. For example, the whole numbers, the integers, the fractions, the decimals, and then look at the explanation uh, of how this is going to be used. So for example, if we look at integers, we're going to read, write, add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers. And then looking at the workplace examples in the third column, 
looking at fractions, for example, we can take a look and it says uh, take and record imperial measurements, determine tool and material sizes, calculate quantities. So just to point out those two from those examples, and I'll, I'll give it a, a few seconds here so you can look at it a little more. Going on to the next uh, slide, um, looking at percentages and just a little example of that, equivalent numbers, other real numbers, equations and formulas, the explanation for their use, and the workplace examples. Looking at the next slide, we can see rate, uh, rates, ratios, and proportions, measurement conversions, areas, perimeters, and volumes, as well as geometry. And I will show you some activity examples that relate to a lot of the things on this particular slide uh, using some of these foundation skills and um, as well as the tie into workplace examples. And then on the last one, um, the uh, trigonometry. Uh, summary calculation, statistics, and probability. And I'll, I'll go over a couple of the columns with this one too, just using the summary calculations, the explanation. Uh, calculate averages and rates other than percentages, uh, proportions or ratios, and calculate quantities of materials. Something very important to uh, workplace essential skills if we want to look at it in a bigger context um, and then um, looking at the statistics and probability and the workplace examples for that row um, in the workplace examples column of that row um, we can estimate how much of something clients use predict sales trends determine the probability of equipment and parts failure and describe the progress of fabrication and installation tasks Okay, give it a couple of seconds before I go on to the next uh, slide. Okay, so now looking at workplace math skills needed um, a little more in detail. So um, workplace math skills needed measurement and calculation. So skills used to measure and describe the physical world, for example, by taking measurements and calculating area and volume. Okay, once again, looking at some of these essential skills. Money math, uh, skills used in paying and receiving money on the job, for example, in handling cash, making change, preparing bills, or making payments. Schedule, scheduling, budgeting, and accounting. Skills used to manage time and money, for example, in planning and keeping track of how you use your time and money, in choosing the products or services that offer the best value, and in using your time and money wisely. And then the last one, data analysis. Skills used to solve problems by analyzing and comparing numerical data. Looking at some of the um, uh, workplace competencies that I've researched uh, throughout the country, 
and looking at some of these essential skills that are needed, these essential workplace math skills. Um, these four uh, bullet points uh, cover uh, a lot of the um, competencies that are covered through state by state as the workplace essential skills needed uh, in math. Okay, uh, workplace math skills needed. Um, continuing uh, math skills needed in the workplace uh, contain, and, and this is very important as you're putting your activities together, as you're thinking, how do I uh, achieve uh, the skills needed for a particular workplace or just in general? Um, there's extren extraneous information to sort through. So. Um, there's, there's, there's a situation where uh, there's a lot going on and we need to sort through this. Uh, rearranging of information required to get uh, the answer, very much related. Uh, chained steps where sequencing is important. And we all know how important sequencing is in math in general, especially in workplace math. Okay, so to work with this extraneous information, we need to um, be able to um, arrange the information in a logical order where that the sequence puts us in that direction to solve the problem mathematically. Um, and then in some interpret the English, the words in terms of math and um, we're well, where we're um, very aware of the process of uh, putting uh, the num the no words, the situation into numbers. Um, and once we've done that, to choose the correct math tools to solve the problem. Okay, workplace mathematical situations. So as mentioned, uh, problems that are word problems, uh, situations, uh, problems that are highly plausible on the job situations. Workplace mathematical situations require that you, once again, interpret the English, the words in terms of math, choose the correct math tools to solve the problem. Very important as I try to stress to my students that the work is in this interpretation of the words to the numbers. Once we get that down, choosing the math tools is the next step, but it's actually easier than the interpretation of the words to the numbers. Math use at work, and here's just some surveys, and we'll, we'll, we'll connect all these ideas together with these uh, charts here. If you could take a quick look at what percentage of Americans actually use math at work, and, um, and then the type of math that is used, okay? Um, and the survey uh, was compiled uh, by Northeastern University uh, sociologist uh, Michael Handel. Um, and we look at this and we see um, where the highest percentages of the math that's used in the workplace, where they fall. And it is the um, not the most challenging uh, math skills. Uh, though there there are uh, those past uh, where we have statistics and even up to calculus, but you, you can take a look at those percentages. And um, 
where it says any more advanced, where the 22% is, that would cover, um, you know, algebra, geometry, uh, trigonometry, statistics, and calculus. And then it's it's kind of broken down a little bit more uh, in detail at, at when you pass that, the 22%. Once again, going back to the situation, the words being interpreted in a mathematical way in numbers that's where the that's where we have the challenge with many of our students once we've arranged an equation um, we're, we're able to work through it and and if you see here many of those equations will fall into those first four categories from any math to fractions. Okay, then we look at uh, another chart, um, higher level math used by job type. And um, you can look at it as, as upper uh, white collar, low white collar, upper blue collar, low blue collar, and of course the the uh, color coding will lead you through that. And at the bottom, um, you have the types of math used. Once again, proving the the skills most needed. Um, in the workplace. Now, just to um, kind of test this, if you if you look through um, and and just studies and. Uh, workplace competencies uh, throughout the country, uh, looking at, at, at different states and just some examples that I can I can give you, um, you know, Kansas, Kentucky, Mexico, Michigan, uh, New York, uh, Washington. Um, when you look at the way that they have their workplace competencies and, um, and math um, as the skill, um, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at any math. We're looking at algebra up to geometry with a lot of the 100% mass fractions, proportions, decimals, percents, um, really the driving force to understand how to interpret those from a situation and, and be able to solve the mathematical equation. Okay, so now the fun stuff. Uh, math games and puzzles for skills practice and just uh, some examples. I, I have uh, hundreds of these um, for many of my uh, in-person presentations. This is my favorite part. It's very hands-on. Uh, it it really gets the students involved and it really puts them into that uh, workplace uh, situation. Um, so math interactive skills practice um, opens avenues for discovery of, of strategies for solving problems, deepens understanding of numbers. The repetition, all games have a built-in repetition, right? The repetition develops computational fluency. It develops critical thinking, problem solving, and strategic reasoning skills connected to contextualized practice.
just some examples of games. Um, you can go to uh, puzzlemaker.discoveryeducation.com uh, and, and make your own. Um, it, it really helps the student to think in a more rounded sense to get to try to get the number, the idea of the numbers backwards and forward uh, um, and forwards and backwards and be able to um, get a number sense. And this is really what we're looking at when it with a lot of these games. Um, and, and this one, you know, using the numbers one through nine to complete the equations, um, you can easily put these together. They can have multiple practices. Um, in this particular um, activity, um, you can find some that are actually interactive online. If not, you could uh, create them, copy paste them, and make them interactive pretty easily um, in um, any um, office type product uh, where you can create your own uh, um, tables and squares and so on. Uh, to put into your uh, puzzle and they can type inside of those. The games of 15, these are a very popular type of Sudoku kind of uh, game. Um, you know, the object uh, is uh, of the game is uh, to create a line of, of, uh, of cards uh, that add up to 15. You can make them as challenging as you want. You can let them uh, use uh, the numbers one through nine more than once. They could be repeated or uh, uh, one through nine only using the numbers one time. You can have them have multiple rows, um, whether they be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, of equaling to 15. Um, and this was uh, this particular one was inspired by um, a site, uh, learnwithmathgames.com, um, and I, I created a lot of different ones from that um, those ideas on that site. This one is just the example of the more challenging one uh this one you can only use each number the, the digits one through nine one time you would they would have to equal 15 on the whole game um, so equaling 15 diagonally vertical uh horizontal and um only once again using the digits once it's a little more challenging once again, building those skills, building that number sense idea um, and working through it. Um, great for warm up, great for getting the, the student thinking um, in mathematical terms, thinking about numbers, thinking about sequence and um, how do numbers work um, in, in different directions. Um, these are uh, games that I've uh, through once again through some ideas that I, I learned uh, through some publications and as well as online. This one is uh, from a, a Google.com site, um, uh, pvlearners.net, um, that, that we're using dominoes. Uh, I can use playing cards, um, uh, dice. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a particular um, game source, once again, for that practice, for that repetition, and something that many of our, our students, clients uh, need, which is a, a fraction help. And in this case, you're just multiplying, you're, you're taking your dominoes, uh, shoveling them around and, and uh, putting them up and, and getting your numbers that you need to do fractions um, and multiplying that and of course creating the game there is a place to record it there's a place to get points uh, there's a place for directions for the game and um, and I just like the recording of 
having a table to record into because that's also a skill. So um, having the rows and the columns and being able to record your information and and then you know taking it further later on where um, you are using more rows and columns to um, actually solve equations or a situation. Okay, so here's my first question. Uh, are there any math uh, skills, practice, game, or puzzle ideas that you would like to share and then you want to send it in, uh, uh, type it up and um, send it in through the chat? see we're getting quite a few in that those are the ones that I've, I'm reading now there's great ideas And as, as we go through um, after this uh, presentation throughout the week, we can definitely gather some more of these ideas and, and share them um, as well as some, some more that I can, I can definitely uh, contribute. Great. Okay, well, I'm going to continue here, and I, I see there's uh, quite a few of you with the with the same uh, liking. Uh, roll the dice, um, cut the cards, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's great. That's great. Okay, varied math skills activities examples. So let me see if I can uh, get you a little bit more excited here on some other activities. Um, so uh, examples of activities that can be completed interactively on screen and hard copy. Um, and uh, just as a, as a confession here, I, I make every one of my activities as uh, possible to be done online, uh, interactively on a computer um, or printed out as a hard copy for various reasons. Um, so reinforce a variety of math skills. Open-ended questions integrating math across curriculums. Those are those are for me the when I I think that my activity actually succeeded because we can talk about anything uh, because math does relate to just about anything. So um, we can go across curriculums um, and and look at a, a lot of different things from a simple math situation or equation uh, or a numerical expression. Um, reach very varying skill levels with the same activity. 
which once again is something that you know an activity works if you can do that and something very much needed in any adult education classroom. <laughs> Activities that ensure that math instruction builds on what each student already knows. And we always want to, we want to, we want to scaffold what they're learning, right? And keep going, keep going, keep going to build that, that uh, tower of knowledge. Examples of tools that can be used in each math content area. So remember, we ultimately need those tools. Um, we can work with the, the reading, the comprehension, working it into numbers, and then eventually using the right tools to solve the equation. And then here's my first activity here. And this is a perfect example, something very easy to put together, something we've been doing uh, forever, right? The multiplication table. Uh, this is one that they will hopefully complete and use throughout. Um, and something that could easily be put together um, on, on a, um, an office type of product, a Google type of product, um, and you can use it as an interactive, um, or you can find these online as well, where you can complete them um, online and get um, immediate results of whether you're doing it correctly or not, and be able to print them out for use later as a reference material. Of course, a lot of words that mean one thing in real and regular life and, in, uh, and then in uh, the math life, uh, something completely different, but they can help us to put together um, a situation uh, into an equation. Um, so this particular activity uses a word bank um, with a lot of those words, and um, I ask students to, to choose at least five of those words that they believe have a similar meaning, um, develop a title, and then in their own words explain why they believe those words should be in this group together. Um, being able to define a lot of the words, Maybe there be one or two words that are not in the right group or it could be in multiple groups. This is up for discussion and that's great. Um, it, it works with what the student knows already where ultimately we might need to use a dic dictionary, but we start with that, you know, the glass half full, what do they bring into the table? Tell me what you know, what do you know in your own words and it incorporates that writing component as well. Um, a good example I was mentioning earlier uh, about using uh, tables, uh, using the rows, using the columns, uh, what happens where they meet, um, what happens with the identification of the product, what happens with the measurement of the product, um, and this is just a uh, two sites, site A, site B, the tables for those sites reporting an underground contamination of um, benzene, dioxin, and asbestos. Um, and of course, there's follow-up questions that go with this as well. Uh, and also an, an online version where there's um, a video and other questions related to that as well. Recipe conversion, a favorite. Um, you can probably, you can find millions of these on, online, um, no exaggeration. Uh, some uh, very well written, others you can change around and make them your own. Um, you know, you can add some uh, uh, spice to the recipe and to the story, right? Uh, make it interesting for your students. Um, have them convert 
convert it, uh, have them bring in their own recipes, and you can take those recipes and make them into questions, uh, make them into activities, um, uh, give them the, the table of conversions, uh, work with that to uh, make the, the recipes that they bring in into uh, activities. And could they eventually be um, uh, cooked, um, completed, and served? Yes. Coupon use. Um, many of my students want to become better shoppers. Um, use uh, coupons or use sales effectively. Just because you're using a coupon, just because you're uh, responding to a sale doesn't mean that you're using it to the best of of, of your advantage, right? Uh, your money saving uh, advantage. Um, so here's a, a table that would work with any particular coupon. This just happened to be a clothing coupon, um, and um, and you know, you get markdown after markdown, uh, sale price, and then you've got the, the yellow tags that have a bigger markdown than the plain white tags. And how does that work out? How does, how does that really come down to a price, my final sale price? What am I paying for this item? And of course, this relates a lot to some of those um, competencies that I mentioned earlier that are across every state, um, you know, a lot of it has to do with allocating money. How do I work with money? Okay, uh, working with formulas and working with hands-on materials, in this case, shapes. Uh, this is an activity that I work with my students. It's it's a it's an ongoing activity. We actually um, select a shape per week, and um, we note the name of the shape. Uh, we draw the shape. If 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 it's interactive, if we're working on the computer with this, we might just go to um, insert and, and find a shape and draw the shape um, or go online and find a real life version of that shape and uh, an, uh, an item in um, in real life that we can put on there that represents that shape. We go to the perimeter. Of course, we add a formula sheet to this. We look at the perimeter. We use an actual ruler or a uh, measuring tape. Um, we can also find uh, rulers or measuring tapes that are interactive online that we can use as well if we're doing this on the computer. We look at the area and the volume, once again, using the formulas. Um, we look at the, the surface area and go th through that. Um, depending on whether we're doing it online or um, uh, as a hard copy, uh, we have a scale set up where the, the shape is weighed and we have a weight that goes with that as well. Once again, a work skill, right? A workplace skill. Um, and we go through that on a weekly basis with different shapes. Very easy to put together. The shapes you can find online or just, you know, start saving containers of uh, just about anything um, and uh, use those shapes. Okay, so are there any workplace math skills activity ideas that you would like to share? So uh, if you can um, write some of those, give a couple minutes.
Oh uh, yeah, those are those are great. Um, I, I I see many of you have that idea that uh, the the workplace skills starts with having that the numeracy, having the understanding of the words converting to um, numbers, and having that understanding of vocabulary. Right. Um, that's that's how we lead to a particular on the job math skill uh carpentry uh, you know nursing uh, that leads us to those individualized contextualized very contextualized uh math skills as our students get into hopefully into those trades and those types of of jobs Thank you. Okay, so here's an activity um, that I, well, an activity idea that I have um, quite a quite a, a variety of uh, individualized activities within within the idea. So how much material do I need? Um, so looking at um, algebra formulas, word problems, measurements. The, the main objective is to engage students with math skills needed in various occupations, especially in manufacturing, construction, and healthcare workplaces. Uh, students will learn to apply formulas and mathematical concepts to real life situations. Healthcare professionals use a variety of measurements and formulas to determine the right dose or amount of a product. And many of these professions review formulas and shapes and compare contrasts, uh, perimeters, areas, volumes, and measurements. So the objectives of these activities are, are um, to engage students. Uh, that's the main objective, okay? Um, and, and math skills the, that uh, are needed in various occupations and as I mentioned the manufacturing construction and healthcare um, um, the construction activities will serve as examples to illustrate students um, uh, will learn to apply formulas mathematical concepts to real life situations and that's that is the underlying um, um, effect of, of these act types of activities um, so looking at the, the level and the subject, um, this, these particular ones that I have here are up to uh, maybe a sixth grade uh, adult basic ed uh, reading uh, level, algebra, formulas, word problems, uh, uh, measurements, um, and anything that I can use as materials that are hands-on, tactile, and just some examples uh, tape measure, ruler, medicine cups, and so on. Uh, using a calculator, um, you know, uh, newspaper ads that might tell me about uh, the price for paint, flooring, tiles, carpet, uh, any of those things. And then, of course, formula sheets that could be supplied uh, from various sources, uh, preferably something that is used as a reference material for um, HSC study. Okay, and then the procedures, um, you know, review the formulas, the shapes, and compare, contrast, perimeters, areas, volumes. Um, I always allow my students to work together on these projects. Um, they they verbalize and they work on their paper, and it's it is a problem solving community, and and this is how we work at our workplace. Um, I know when I have any work done in my house here, there's uh, two or three gentlemen or uh, workers that come in and they work together. Uh, they work to uh, solve a problem. They verbalize what is going on, what is needed, um, and what they're going to be working on. Um, and then, of course, there's a, um, there's a follow up. Um, where might this be used in a real life setting? Uh, would can we go through this and save more money? Um, and how else can we further our knowledge of of these particular concepts? 
and I know this is a lot of material and this will be recorded and um, hopefully we continue our discussion and we can get more ideas uh, that back this up a little bit more. Okay, so this is just one basic example using these three floor plans. And um, so using the formula, formula uh, for the area of a rectangle and uh, for the first three measurements and then um, um, using a measurement where one square yard equals nine square feet, um, you know, using that for the, uh, the next three measurements and so on, just the varying and using, uh, making sure that uh, some things are omitted, uh, some things are added. Once again, looking back at what we talked about earlier, where the situations have extraneous information or maybe not enough information, and we need to uh, find that. So this is one example here, uh, um, a little more detailed um, with the, of course, the scenario, the situation, um, the Perez family that wants to paint two bedrooms, uh, walls and ceilings. So we have a floor plan, we have a snapshot of the room, uh, we have a formula, um, how to work through that. Uh, we have the walls split up in, so you can record your information. Um, and then we also have the uh, ceiling by length and width. So then the total area to be painted. And then we go and we look at the number of gallons. Okay, and notice that that's in there as well. One gallon of paint generally covers about 400 square feet. How much carpet? Pretty much the same setup. Uh, this one, Mike wants to carpet their uh, living room, their living dining room area, um, so on, um, and broken up into uh, there's two different formulas here because of the shapes of the rooms and square feet needed, square yards needed, and then the cost is built into uh, the situation, the wording. How much wood flooring, same kind of setup. Okay, so now let's look at the, the next, it, it's actually an activity-based organization that I have of, of these two websites. Um, so the Bureau of Labor and Statistics and the uh, XP Math um, website and Math Needed by Career. So that's my, my activities. Um, so I look at these two sites. Um, I look at the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics um, and XP math uh, uh, to figure out my students uh, will come up to me and say, well, I, you know, I want to be a cook. I, I really don't need any math. Um, so we can look that up um, and find that there is quite a, quite a bit of uh, math skills needed to be a cook. Um, so we can look through these careers and, and look at the options. Um, let me see if I can get into this section here. So this is the .gov site, and here's the occupation and the requirements. Um, and you can look through the different occupations and, and those requirements and, um, and find a lot of information uh, about those particular requirements. Now, we can also go and for the sake of time, and once again, we could cover this, make a note of what you want to talk about a little bit more throughout the week, and um, we can talk a little bit more about this activity because it is very detailed. Uh, going into XP math, take those career choices and, and look at it in um, uh, by that particular career. So we can look at, uh, you know, construction managers. Well, that would be too obvious. Let's look at, um, there we go, 
um, food service managers. And we can find that the food service managers, after we've looked up other interesting information on the .gov site, we can go over here and, and look up what the math needs are of a food service manager. Okay, we can even go a little further. And as we, we go through this uh, decimal, uh, we can find out a little bit more about that. And we could go further and, and um, look at other uh, services uh, that would require decimals and and from there we, we can put together practice sites that would help us with that particular skill so what I do is uh, once I've done a survey of the uh, occupations uh, careers that my students want to go into I make uh, I put these things together basically as a card uh, an interactive card where they can go and, and practice these individual skills. So to end this off, I just wanted to point out some resources, uh, uh, some websites. Um, so you know the the you know the, a lot of these uh, resources are created and maintained by outside organizations that um, but you know would be useful. Um, and um, let's me go through some of these. Um, so for games and puzzles, I have uh, mathopolis.com, uh, mathplay.com. Uh, Puzzle Maker is the one I, I detailed earlier, and riskyspears.com, just to name a few. Um, I actually have bookmarked uh, hundreds of these that are pretty effective with my students and my clientele okay um interactive math tools uh, a plus math uh, bbc.com um the math.com math2.org uh, mathematics hellum uh, math is fun.com um math uh um math ced services.com very interesting, very detailed uh, when it comes to connecting those careers to the math needed. Um, a lot of statistics uh, about particular careers and the particular skills that are needed in math. Uh, Metricconversions.org. Uh, um, once again, the, the services, uh, the Med uh, CED services, Ed services. Um, and that, that site that I, I can talk about for a long time. Um, NSCS.ed.org uh, services, um, or, or create a graph is really what a lot of people know this site by, because you could create graphs and it's pretty popular. Um, and, and just to name some of the others, uh, online math learning, the sob.org site. And then one of my favorites that I'll go right back to is the National Library for Virtual Manipulatives which I use quite a bit just because you see it in the title, uh, something I've been talking about, using those manipulatives and uh, especially virtual, they're, they're very engaging. Um, some other tools, uh, I use the shoulder.org site quite a bit, sosmath.com, uh, thatquiz.org, uh, which is you can see is in a, in a variety of languages, uh, timetoast.com, which I like to use as a um, literature piece to my math, including the history and so on of, of mathematicians and math ideas through time. Um, uh, Vendian.org, which is a uh, printable uh, paper materials. I use their rulers quite a bit. Uh, the Visual Fractions, uh, once again, um, a very interactive site uh, for reference. It's it's great. Uh, and the uh, Zonalander, uh, Zonaland uh, Education.com, um, lots of science related to math. Um, some printable worksheets and cards, uh, the learningtrends.com, 
uh, sendteacher.org, uh, worksheetsdirect.com, and studystacks.com, which I know many of my teachers use. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they're popular for those of you listening. Um, then, of course, uh, the links resources. Take a look at those. So if there's any last minute questions out there, please uh, type them in. And there is a survey and I've got, just got to that uh, slide. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, if everyone could please take the survey that's listed here. And as Brooke mentioned in the beginning, our community discussion will be starting right after this and continue on through next week. So if there were questions that you didn't get answered or things that come up, um, please feel free to share them in the, in the discussion there on links. And then um, we'll also be posting the PowerPoint and other materials and things like that. So please feel free to reach out to us at Links or Brooke or um, Michael if you have questions. Is there anything else, Michael? No, oh, thank you very much for everybody for attending. Great, thanks everyone. And thank you, Michael. Thank you. <laughs>